Welcome back, Bannock folks. You're tuned into another Locals Only here on the Bannock Dotes channel. I'm with my homie here, Google McRiggle. I didn't know we were doing that for this. I'm here with Crispy Chicken. And uh, we're here to tell you all about mostly Southern Ontario, but all sorts of places, you know, even further from that. But this is pretty much your cheat sheet for all sorts of local music coming from Southern Ontario. We like to cover all sorts of underground and unsigned labels. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much, uh, this is what we do here on the channel. All right, guys. So to get started with locals only, we have Southern Ontario's favorite metalcore band. It's Single Wound. They put out their album, Death is a Kindness. Just this band immediately reminds me of all the things I love about Misery Signals. It's got the massive breakdowns, the murder chords, super weighty low vocals, which like I always liked. Like I normally like like mid to high range vocals way more, but like Carl era Misery Signals, the lows just made it. And I think that Cole's lows are on that level of just like adding so much character. A lot of introspective and angry lyrics. Drums are techy. There's some good old fashioned talking on here. Death is a kindness. The track is uh, like techy, multi-dimensional breakdown, laden banger. The vocal performance on His Darkness Falls also stands out. Um, the strained highs and like super thunderous lows have a giant feeling to them. Again, that few vocalists, that like Carl sort of thing, it's, it's not very obtainable. It's hard to get it to sound like that. It's the heartfelt message to Jordan on the 012421 interlude uh, gave me chills, made me tear up the first time I heard it. Leads into Only Temporary, which is a bit more of like an emotive tone. Reminds me of like early hundreds, early The Ghost Inside, early For the Fallen Dreams. More dynamic, more emphasis on melody. This album is front loaded with like the super heavy tracks. And then the melodic tracks seem to come, you know, a little bit after. They really front load it with like the super, super moshy stuff. We already talked about the closer on this album. It's a great song, great ending to end things on. This band has a specific set of tools that they like use repeatedly in their songs, but they're so practiced and so precise at writing these songs. Metalcore almost became like a bad word in a lot of music circles um, or even nowadays, really. It can, and um, nowadays, especially, it conveys a very different sound than what you get from something like Single Wound. This is like metalcore for hardcore kids. Like this is so far removed and better than what is like currently popular in metalcore. So yeah, congratulations to them on this release. And I'd love to see this band get more global exposure. Yeah, like to just, it's more core than it is metal. If you want to like break it down to more of that, like if that makes any sense. Um, counterparts have a really good, they're really good at doing that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also wrote down Misery Signals. It's funny that you say that. And like, I mean, you and I grew up with Misery Signals, so it's, it's no surprise that we're making a reference to them. Yeah, this is some of the heaviest tunes we've heard from Single Wound, I think. I mean, like, not that they weren't heavy before, but there's just something like gritty about this release. Um, Tyler and I definitely resonate deeply with, you know, losing a, a best friends in a community. Like if, if it hasn't been said before, Tyler and I have lost best friends in the past and uh, we had a large group uh, of friends that helped kind of mend uh, and like metal core was definitely present in that sense. And like, you know, maybe we wouldn't be here today without that. So uh, I, I love that the camaraderie is involved in the community uh, like this is it's just, it's, it's, it's great to see. And uh, you have like, with like-minded individuals they came together and made like really cool songs and like like tributes to that which was kind of something that we didn't necessarily get the best that we ever got out of this was a life ruiner song that was just put out for chasing clout <laughs> it's kind of weird but uh you know uh i'm just super happy that th these folks get to 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 remember jordan like this and in such a an honorable way uh this mm -hmm. was this was a great release by single wound uh seven wounds out of a single wound so that's wait seven wounds out of a single wound that's that's an amazing yeah. score, guys. If you can <laughs> find the pyramid that's scribed on and figure out what he means, that's an amazing score. Next up, we have the Montreal Mean Muggers Death Nap with their release, Knife Work. <laughs> Uh, 
this is a solid hardcore punk and even kind of like a metal mix, sonically speaking. Uh, the song does a great job delivering on each front of one of those genres. I think it does like a like a really good job conveying each one of those. You know, it's got punk vibes, it's got hardcore vibes and even metal kind of like you know, Etid would kind of do that too. Every time I die, they were they they would kind of bridge those like they they had attitudes about them. And the ending gets really dirty with that that breakdown. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, this is super sick. Seven seven knives out of ten. The line that they're walking between punk and metal on this track is like razor thin, thrashy. There's groovy bright guitars. They have a nice southy feeling. Very clean and dense drums with a lot of satisfying drum rolls. I like the mathy dissonant part. It's in and out so quick too. And I really like how they drop into that breakdown too. Those like big bends. Like it sounds very nice. Very nice to my ears. Vocals also sound like pissed off. They're a little more buried in the mix than I would have preferred. I would have liked to have just heard them a little bit more. Mix is still good. Has a nice sludgy tone to it. It's just a mean sounding track from them. I love it. Brampton Noise Pollution Lice have a new track out. It's called Three Strikes. This ain't a safe space. Get out of my face. Can't get no. Did you ever have lice as a kid? <laughs> a couple times. A couple times. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel like I got lice once too, but I found out not at school. I feel like <laughs> one of the scariest parts of being a kid is like, when they would do the lice checks and if you were going to be that kid getting sent home, that's like, like I ain't coming back to that school. I remember I should probably <laughs> omit the name. So maybe we'll Shakira it. But um, there was this, li- there was this girl who lived in the co-op I used to live in when I was really young um, named Shakira. Anna. And she was just giving everyone lice. But apparently, if you like everyone told her mom, she's like, that's impossible. And she like just denied it to the death. And everyone just circularly kept getting lice from hanging out at the house. So there's that. And, and, well, <laughs> you know what? You know what's relatable about that is how infectious these songs are. Oh, my God, Phil, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, th- this band, though, um, their name's Lice, but they sound it sounds like you're being torn apart by a flurry of like horse flies. Like this is like fast, angry, gross, cool mix on the drums. I love how loud the bass is mixed and I like the radio style cueing on like the yelled vocals fits the mix. Perfect. The vocal performance on this song is uh, just in general really cool. There's a lot of ideas going on. Um, it's a lot more interesting of a vocal take than you usually get out of the, get out of like the power violence genre. The main groove reminds me a lot of Corn. I don't know if you picked up on that. It reminded me of Corn. Uh, yeah. The drums drums are mixed really well too. They ride above like the fuzzy guitar tone really well. Yeah, crazy track. I want to see these guys live. Like just to piggyback, um, yeah, no, I love the the sound of like their last demo. It was really mixed and mastered in a way where it just kind of sounded like all the mixing on the dial board was just cranked to eleven. Um, for this single, it kind of felt a little bit cleaned up um, in regards of uh, uh, their last demo. But yeah, no, this is like it still has like the dirty recording elements involved. Uh, you like just like what you were saying. Um, I absolutely love the vocal delivery. Uh, just like giving me like unhinged roadside serial killer vibes is what I wrote down. Uh, this is just like a tough anthem. Um, I wish the lyrics offered a bit more substance. The song is clearly about someone specifically, and a lot of the time with hardcore. They typically travel a safe route with common cliches when it comes to lyrics like fuck you you piece of shit and uh, you know the lyrics just that's just the lyricist and me being picky but I, like i still think it's a really cool song uh overall i do think the song accomplishes its goal that it's set out to be like stay out of the pit when this song comes on you know you know, you know what i mean <laughs> but it's, it's good mm-hmm. Jokes on him. He thought he changed all the passwords. I changed all the passwords on him. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I kicked him out. Jokes on him. I hacked his internet. It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> we probably bought ourselves a forty more, forty more minute window here on our free version of Zoom, guys. <laughs> Hit the join button. <laughs> we got Hogtown beat down. Crosshair with their brand new demo out. Which 
This is Wartooth tattoo artist, merch designer, all around great dude, Larry. Uh, he has a band out. They are fucking sick. Um, yeah, I have a couple tattoos from Larry. Larry's a great guy. I was not expecting the vocal tone you get uh, the first time you hear Larry on this. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've ever heard Larry speak, mm-hmm. Phil, but like it, no. <laughs> this was really unexpected. It's gritty and sardonic. It leans heavily into like street style delivery for the mids to highs and the lows have like an old school tonality, like bolt throwery, crowbar-y. The vocal flow itself has a very rap feeling characteristic to it. It's definitely not unintentional because like the intro to the song Killed to Death which is a great name for his song, by the way, <laughs> has a full on Denzel Curry interpolation in it. He does the ultimate thing. Does he really? Yeah. I, didn't pick up I am that. the one. Don't need a gun. Don't wait. Yeah. And he, he full on does an a ultimate interpolation. <laughs> the drum. Yeah, no, it's so sick. The drums sound great. I love how the cymbals are mixed specifically. Guitar tones are super heavy. Bass is nice and loud and slinky. Uh, I'd love to hear this band incorporate um, like a real like dungeonous snare, like that dodgeball snare. You know what I mean? I think you could just make this sound even more evil if we like hone in on that snare tone. Everything about this band is like um, what we were talking about before with like no hope for mankind. This is like intimidation music. Like the lyrics are ridiculous. They've created a character that's like larger than the sum of its parts. And I love that. I think that's such a good way to sell your band. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm really excited to see what this band does going forward. It, the Trailer Park Boys uh, sound clip <laughs> at the beginning of this was super cool. What I really liked about this is obviously this is two creative people outside of music but are like like adjacent to it like you know larry with his you know logo creating and like tattoo artist and like you got dylan in this who has done videography for like trauma model and oh, Miranda sacrifice and uh, he even played with Miranda sacrifice for a bit here so this is like i feel like you know these creative people are constantly around music and having people hire them that like maybe that they, they looked at themselves and said like let's give a shot at this let's do this we can do this but better kind of thing and uh yeah that's what like going into this like i was really like i was really looking forward to this it's kind of it's kind of like when you go to prison and you have to fight the biggest guy this is like (laughs) what they did with this music and that's what they did like they delivered on this um like you know whenever we hear about another ontario hardcore band like you you know we're getting there's a lot of them coming out these days and it's it's hard to, to kind of stick out amongst a lot of them and but i think they did a really good job especially with larry's vocal delivery like he he he, he's like doing a lot of like the heavy lifting with this kind of making it feel like it's a new york hardcore style uh this was like a super cool release kind of like warhound uh yeah no i really like this uh you picked up on the denzel curry thing i didn't pick up on it but did you hear the disturbed oh wow (laughs) i didn't pick up on (laughs) it yeah yeah they did he did it like a oh wow there's no way there's how did i not notice that god kills the death is such a funny song name so like yeah no they're they're doing lots of cool things Uh, they're they're very self-aware and it's uh just which look more look 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 out on dairy hardcore crosshair is fucking they made their fucking stance they they're, they're let it be known next up we have the sudbury hooligans rock <laughs> pile with their ep dunny days i feel very confident saying rock pile is one of my favorite hardcore bands in ontario right yeah. now um <laughs> they were actually in my top five artist plays of last year Um, I could not stop listening to Fresh Out the Bin. This new EP turns a few things up a notch here. The guitar work is a little more intricate and interesting. They've added a lot more of like a metallic influence. Uh, There's more dive bombs, a solo or two in here, at least one. Everything from a guitar perspective has been an absolute level up. I wish the vocals had been turned up a couple decibels just to put them more at the front of the mix. The vocalist really felt like the star of the show on the last EP, but now the guitars and the drums feel like they have so much character too. And it just makes this band like even more of a standout thing right now. Like this is, this, this is it. This is really good. <laughs> oh shit. Fucking prison Fantana was back at it again. <laughs> hey Tyler, do you know when you listen to rap and like, 
you can tell how dialed in the kayfabe is like what i mean by that is like you'll hear like a scrawny white kid talking about selling drugs and like going to jail and we damn well know that they're just rapping in their parents rich basement they and, lived uh, in a on a cul-de-sac yeah yeah and then you hear like a group like griselda where like you quickly pick up that they're just like rapping about their life and like it's not kayfabe mm-hmm. at all uh, that's the case with rock pile uh, you can tell that this is an affront or kayfabe like prison fantano wants you dead uh and he has a clique of people who will back the fuck out of him so watch out uh these are great breakdown songs now these are great for real they hit like 10 times harder uh just the with the vocalist just so fucking i i love a good vocalist and this this is what i'm here for what i'm trying to say is i wouldn't want to owe these guys money i, I think that's really what i'm trying to get across um no rock pile excel i like everything they do they do within the genre um the vocals are very clearly on point uh the guitar riffs are heavy unique and intricate uh well like like the thunderous drums keep up on pace with the, uh, like like at like at ease like it feels so natural this is like this is like jedi mind tricks with breakdowns that's like the, what the terror remix was trying to achieve this is like tough this is hard i'm scared next up we have brampton punk rap Dear God, with half a man, bracket, tears on the TTC. Tears on the TTC when I heard about my man trying to justify God's master plan, had to pass the time and I was back again. I can tell you that you're likely a big fan of this because I know that you're like really big into the alternative rap, like the avant-garde trap. It's like, that's like your middle name. Uh, and don't get me wrong, this is well-produced. Tyler Avant-Garde Trap. <laughs> that's actually yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, Ty- Tyler Avant-Garde Trap. McAllister. Um, and don't get me wrong, this is well produced. It achieves what it set out to accomplish and is certainly unique. Um, all that being said, this type of rap necessarily isn't for me. Uh, it's not to say that this is bad by any means. I will go into it and with an unbiased opinion. You also just did that reaction with Kyle with the black midi. That that's not for me. That wouldn't <laughs> be for me. That that's I mean it's it's cool and it's cool, but it's black not midi for me. bangs. Um but uh yeah, no, I, I do think this is a cool single by uh dear god uh so say what you will i think that they're always leaving you guessing and uh creating music performances that will always leave you wanting more uh, so yeah shout out to dear god yeah um i don't know if we mentioned that they're off leash affiliated but i always like to that's right um yeah they came through with like more of an introspective rap song um very much more eerie and minimal beat than we would normally get from them. Normally they're using a lot of like noisy punk instrumentals. This gives the vocal delivery a lot more like of a center stage than we're used to with hearing with him. Normally he's he's mixed into the mix and I'll bury it a little bit more, but here he's really front and center. Also really like the scratchy static cutting they put in on the vocals where it's like almost flickering in and out. It adds such mm-hmm. a like interesting texture to the song. Production is really, really interesting. I can't really say I've heard any beat quite like this this is a song that you really can't like describe in a video so yeah (laughs) just go listen to it speaking of off leash me and kyle oops i karate chopped my mic um and it shattered because i'm so strong so um we can't do this anymore sorry cut speaking of off leash we not we me and kyle because you were gone and i've changed the passwords and you're not on the channel that joke um, took a look at DGAF from Clockwise. Do I even give a fuck? No way! I ain't even seen a fuck! No way! Tell me that you give a fuck! No way! The rock is here! You're about to get fucked up! I forgot to say their intro name and I have to because it's funny. I wrote down Toronto Hot Dog Flavored Water. There it is, guys. Comedy, comedy. <laughs> That's why you show up here. But yeah, we took a look at that video. So if you want our in-depth thoughts on that song, um, go t- watch the video. It was a fun video. We got to have Kyle on. We love Kyle. And that song bangs, so. Yeah, that song did bang. I did write down a little bit for it because I wasn't involved in that. Oh, yeah, good idea. uh, I really like the little nuances that happen in that song, like the background noises, like the record scratching, the the bleep on the mosh call, I thought was a very interesting take. I thought that was cool. Chef's guess. Um, uh, yeah, no, they're really pioneers of what they're doing with like this, like, new hardcore genre thing. Like, it's a, it's it's very much alive in its year. But this is, like, straight from the past, Lincoln Park, and, like, <laughs> like a little little dash, a little soft dash of, like, Lonely Island. Just a little tongue and cheek. Easy, like... easy, easy. <laughs> no, I mean, mm. I mean that by, like, you know, like... <laughs> 
I, I don't know about you. I still will go. Okay, I was going to say, I guess it heavily depends on how you feel about the Lonely Island. <laughs> <laughs> I will still go out of my way and listen to a Lonely Island record. I, I think they're clever uh, and because a lot of the songs are well produced. And like, uh, anyway, it's done well. Well, we, 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 we love that for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think that, that there was something playful, I guess, what I'm trying to say uh, about this track. Yeah, uh, no, for sure. Tongue in cheek. Yeah. But he hasn't even seen a fuck. He hasn't even it's seen so it it's so funny, dude. This the <laughs> use of oh my god, that song's great. It's so funny. Shout out you guys. I was to say fuck you guys. Fuck you guys for writing a song that good. London new punk polluted are back at it with the backup plan. No! 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 This was a so su- super cool hardcore tune. Um, I vividly remember covering them last time with their EP Insidious. I remember mentioning that they reminded us both of Blindside. Um, but with this song, it actually sounds like they went back and listened to some of the older like turnstile. This is more like punchy and the vocals sit in the pocket perfectly. They're also like shouty yelly, which is the kind of vocals that I think are are great for what they're playing with. I think this is a cool song. And again, something's in that water. Something's in that London water because there's always cool Oi. bands coming out of there. In it. Um, yeah. This is quite the deviation from the last time we talked about Polluted, it feels like. Um, a little more punk. Uh, these vocals are giving me big Rise Against vibes, uh, like Siren songs when they ruled. Mm-hmm. Guitars are very groove focused. I love the speed up on the intro riff. Uh, I like the minimal cleans that are used very effectively in this. I love that stoner rock sort of riff. They use almost like a lead throughout this song. Mm -hmm. They're not reinventing the wheel by any means, but they've put some real six spinners on it. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I like that. Ottawa's most interesting band, Gilgamesh, (laughs) put out a track, The Banker. (laughs) This band is in a total league of their own. (laughs) Um, I'm head over heels for this. I love this type of weird ass shit. Intro reminds me of Listener. Uh, they quickly turn into what feels like eviler, eviler, yeah, <laughs> evil or heavier queens of the Stone Age. The sudden change into the dissonant riff just hits like a brick. When things get heavy with this band, um, it does the same sort of like anxiety inducing uncomfortability that you get with like Chat Pile. Sorry to bring them up, but daughters. Uh, the vocalist sounds like a crazed preacher on the streets. Much like um, with Dear God before, but for sonically very different reasons, Mm -hmm. Uh, there isn't much I can say about this that I'm going to be able to convey really through this. You just need to go put this song on, listen to it, give yourself the heebie-jeebies. It's real good. I also wrote that they were also in their own lane doing their own thing. This band is super wacky, but super artsy and avant-garde punk hardcore. Uh, I vividly remember coming them last time. This kind of feels like what it was like influenced by like idols and like a bit of the chariot slash 68. The song is fairly focused on the vocals, sort of driving us from part to part. Uh, and with that, the lyrics shine the most out of this song. Very unique sounding, very, very, very unique sounding. Uh, the influence is present, but they seem to be taking it in different directions, which always makes it very interesting for a listen. Uh, the lyrics are very poetic and they I feel like they hold a lot of weight in this song. This is you know, like what you're saying, just go out of your way and listen to this song because it's hard for us to describe. And I think we both really got what we needed out of this song. It was just super interesting. We always like listening to something that we haven't really heard before. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of the reason why, you know, we fell in love with uh, Keo uh, so quickly and with that reaction. It's just like, it's hard for us to come across something that we've never necessarily don't know where don't don't know where we're going with it, uh, mm-hmm. and I think Gilgamesh with their song "The Banker" did a great job with that. Absolutely. Next up, we have Hamilton Southern Metalcore, The Good Depression, with their full length record out now, Ox Blood. <laughs> We actually had queued up um, their uh, EP uh, that they put out with the handful of songs that were on it. Uh, but then they put the record out in time. So, you know, we got two birds stoned at once. Uh, with Hell this one. yeah, bro. <laughs> uh, so 
When a massive influential band of any genre calls it a day and hangs up their hat in any sort of genre, uh, their presence is always left forever in the music. You know, Led Zeppelin stopped and we have bands like Greta Van Fleet come out. You know, Daft Punk is stopped and we have bands like, you know, the Tupperware Remix Party come out. You know, there's always these heavy influence bands that kind of just like worship it. And finally, when, when every time I die, this band, we, we get good bands like the good depression and listen i hate to compare to them to every time i die every time we talk about them it's going to be inevitable it's going to be inevitable in this it's a solid yeah it's a solid reference point personally i think they would take it as a compliment and uh well and every time i die doesn't exist anymore so at this point this is the respected members and the other projects are trying the best to not sound like those bands so so here we are with all that being said i think this is this is a good jumping off point this feels like it's like you know hot damn with some like low teens this is like you know the riffs are good depression that they're bringing to the table are on par with like what jordan buckley would write and then like andy william riffs the vocals are very like they're doing an excellent job carrying their own because it's you know let's be honest it's almost hard to recreate what keith buckley does but i think what what the vocalist is doing in the depression are are, are unique in their own way that they could carry they could branch out in a different kind of way that every time I die would maybe not be able to ever do. Like, like it's kind of like if you asked yourself, like, what if every time I die was just like a little bit heavier, just, just a bit, just like a little bit heavier. Um, if you're an e idiot, I beg you to check out this band. I think you're really gonna get into them. These guys are great. They're hardworking individuals. Seven Buckleys out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Matthew Southern Fried Hardcore. This can hang with the best examples of that genre, Dillinger, Chariot, and yeah, especially Every Time I Die. Their vocalist is one of the only vocalists I've ever heard lean into that Keith Buckley style and deliver it with nearly the same level of impact, perfect Mm -hmm. vocal distortion, inflection at the right time. It sounds a lot like Keith's style, but it's so welcome to my ears. Like, it's like... It's it, Keith always had such like a desperation in his cries. Like it's, he doesn't sound like he's happy to be yelling what he's yelling about ever. <laughs> and this, it nailed it. It really nailed it. And it's not an easy thing to do. You're right. It's a whole mood that you have to recreate. Um, mm-hmm. The riffing is absolutely monstrous. There's so many memorable and standout riffs all over this album. The sudden like tornado ass two step that just happens <laughs> in the middle of whimper. The, <laughs> fucking breakdown at the end of something violent in the way yeah is incredible those are my two favorite tracks off this whimper and that something violent in the way is nuts and it, it is such a good track uh sex act is a little more loose and fun has a southern rock feeling um i know i'm not going in order here High Noon is a great tone setter. Uh, absolute mosher. Snakes and Charmers with Blake, we already covered. Go watch our video if you want to hear our uh, deep analysis on that. And I think our both our first time hearing the band ever was that reaction, too. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think this album's best work is primarily front-loaded. Um, I really enjoy the final song, Rot. I think it works great as a closer as well. The other tracks are solid tracks, but they lean a lot more into, like, anthemic choruses and less into, like, the mosh and, like, math-centric stuff Mm -hmm. that, like, my caveman brain (laughs) needs. Um, And I wish Blind Tiger was a little longer and fleshed out into something a little more interesting. I think it'll make a good, like, live interlude thing, but, like, its placement on here just sort of feels like this, like, stop and start that doesn't really feel contextualized with the rest of the songs. Um, but yeah, this is like a really, really incredible album. This band seems relatively low key right now. And I think that they need much more exposure because this is like incredible writing. But if there is an ETID sized hole in your heart, this is going to fit in there pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Ontario Sword Swingers, Skullgate released their two new tracks under the name of Veils. Putting on these new tracks and especially putting them on again to review because I hadn't listened to them since they sent us early demos, Mm -hmm. I immediately noticed how more of like a growly and ambitious vocal performance we get from Andrew. The guitars feel a little techier. Mix is definitely heavier. Vocals are mixed a little more reverbed out and dungeonous. Um... Yeah, this band, when I first heard them, immediately reminded me of, like, This Is Hell and Mind Force. Um, 
And that's a good band to sound like, right? But I think these songs really have much more of a sense of identity that's like unique to them. Mm -hmm. I really like the clean sounds on the intro to Retribution. They're more chimey and reverbed out than the first cleans we heard. Um, And that riff after just goes bananas. Everything in this band um, feels like an upgrade since the already very impressive debut EP we got from them. And uh, they had the best merch game in all of Ontario. So there's that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Skullgate's Labs. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know they have a crazy merch game going on with them. We sat down with them. They're fantastic people. Definitely go check out that interview that we did with them. Yeah, these, like I said, you know, and they, these are just elevated versions of like that first demo. Like they, they, they really. I mean, we, we know of because we sat down and talked with them, but like they really sat down and and crafted these songs and just like shaped them and shaved them down and like you know sanded the final product like into something that they really hashed out into something really cool and then i think some of these i think this is the some of these songs are some of the first songs with a new guitarist i think that they were talking about so it's really cool to hear kind of like a transition um but i believe they also said that their other guitarist was involved with the writing process Mm -hmm. so just a lot of creative minds going in and it's, it's just it's great to hear that this is the the, the final product that we got from them uh, like yeah if you're huge fans of like that metallic hardcore that's kind of happening right now those vocals are super reverb like that's also an element that's happening in hardcore right now this is this, this is a really cool band Skullgate are really cool guys this is a really cool band definitely go check them out seven skulls out of ten gates that makes sense thinking on your feet you didn't write them down this time did you uh something like <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> I like how you've broken from giving it to albums, and now it's just, it's just sporadic. Guess what? What? We got a house. We, that's our house now? That's our house? That's our house now? I mean, I'm recording this right now, and you're actually going to see my reaction. That's so sick. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. What? We just got a house. Oh my god, that's so sick, dude. Congratulations. Dude, I haven't even sent, I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even sent you like the listing at all. It's super cool, dude. Oh my god, it's fuck. It's so cool. We have we have a job to do and we have limited time, but uh, uh, yeah, I will I'll, yeah, I got a house, That's brother. Sick. Southern Ontario party starters, Soul Thief, are back at it again with the bad kind of way. What the fuck? But let me tell you, this gave me the good kind of way um, because oh, this, was, this was great. <laughs> I like this. The production on this Why EP was super stellar. That? <laughs> oh my uh, God. Love this, love the snare tone that they got. This was a cool EP. Uh, very in line with what you know, bands like Misery Signals and like The Bled and like early two thousands Motive Metalcore. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of bands in the Ontario hardcore who are like channeling their emotions as well as like Jericho from Soul Thief is. You can really feel the passion in a lot of the vocals here. Um, I wish there was a bit more riffs than there were breakdowns and like chords but that's just me i still think this is a great record this is seven ring pops out of ten standout track was after all these years there was nothing left but regret i thought that was a cool track yeah this one rules uh moshi definitely over the top at times uh lots of different genre blending and vocal ideas real friends is a sick intro if the whole ep had had like a new metal style vibe to it i would have been totally okay with that but each song really does have its own unique dynamic. The Warlord picks things up into like a thrashy and metal centric mosh banger, uh, big, nice swirling circle pit riffs, a very like WWE attitude <laughs> breakdown. Makes me want to <laughs> suplex a man in spandex. And I like the absolutely gross low growls at the end of that track. Uh, the next track is a big, ambitious, emotive, hardcore song. Uh, but this is my only point of contention on this EP, Phil. And it's a nitpick, but I'm going to get into it. I like this song, but I think the placement of this song is kind of a momentum killer. I think if you took this song and switched it with Gwen Stacy, it would have a better overall flow to the EP. Even the STHC, he's screaming at the beginning of Gwen, 
rhymes with the low notes at the end mm-hmm. of Warboard. I think it would have been such a cool transition. And then the ending of Gwen flows really well into Concrete Socks, which is a fucking banger, by the way. Favorite track on the EP. Love the use of harmonics, the siren ass feedback mm-hmm. thing they do, the leads, the mean ass riff, the double kick. Everything in that song is just totally turned up to 11. Back to my point. If you added in another measure or two into the intro of Concrete Socks, you'd have such a great little flow where it goes out in the feedback, goes back into the open riff. And then on the fifth song, after you've pummeled them with these first four just like bangers, you would have this big, more dynamic, long and emotionally laden song that would feel like a payoff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah, that's a nitpick. All these songs are good. And um, after all these years is a great song. Um, but it it asks more from the listener, and I think that it needed to be farther down in the track list. I just couldn't stop thinking about that for some reason. I want to make it very clear. I love this EP. It is such a dumb (laughs) nitpick. Anyways, um, I also love the outro song, uh, Bad Kind of Wet. Big, simple, and effective Southern metalcore. This EP is begging to be heard live, so go check Mm -hmm. out Soul Thief when you get a chance, and I definitely will when I'm giving you a chance. Toronto Knuckle Sandwich Big Fist are back at it with Play With Me. The, the name and like artwork kind of feels like a nod to like the first Toy Story where that creepy baby spider lives in Sid's room. Um, <laughs> the okay. CP is fantastic. This is the kind of hardcore punk that I fuck with. It should come as no surprise. Helping kind of fits in this similar lane where like the vocals mm-hmm. sound like early comeback kid with more of a punk edge. The singing is appropriately placed throughout each certain songs. The songs are well written, but they're silly enough that you're in on the joke, especially with songs like Bracket. I'm not bracket straight edge. It's so <laughs> it's, good. It's such a good. He clocks song. in at like seven minutes. This is a very cool band. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love this release. I, I love a band that knows how to have fun with the music and, and the way that they present themselves. Yeah, this was cool. This was seven big fists out of ten. Seven minutes out of seven ten. minutes out of ten. This is a punky P brimming with fun ideas, memorable lyrics, fast drumming, furious riffs. Hear what I did there. Um, yeah, and this EP's over faster than the length of, like, the average Avenged Sevenfold song. <laughs> the intro self-titled track, Rules, I love when bands say their own name, and I love the clean singing part at the end, where he's singing about feeling like a $100. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. There's such a cool, like, chaotic lead being played in it's the just, background. He's like, that's not a lot of money. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. <laughs> it's so endearing to me. ADUC is a sonic assault. They didn't post the lyrics and he's a little hard to understand. So I have not uncovered what that means yet. Fender Bender is a little more traditional punk. I like the woos and the hook. I like the chaotic lead. I'm not straight edge is fun as hell. The anthem that we didn't know we needed. Um, I like the clean intro on soul tombs. And that song really reminds me uh, again of siren song era rise against, especially in the vocal delivery, which is high praise gun for me. I promise. Siren Songs is like one of my all times. I listen to that album still like on a regular basis. This EP is seven minutes in punk heaven. All right. Wacken Battle Canada. <laughs> Let me try it again. Wacken Metal Battle Canada Champions Beguiler with their song D- Dave Carradine. Incarnadine. Um, yeah, fresh off their win, they have released an absolutely devastating track. Blasting drums, techie tight guitar work. The way the first breakdown is dropped into a more slammy two-step riff is a very nice and subtle touch. Enormous vocal performance here. The drenched sounding lows, the inhuman highs, they're precise, they sound brutal. This feels like a deathcore band that like actually listens to and has an understanding of death metal. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of deathcore bands were like inspired primarily within the genre itself. Like I want to sound like Whitechapel. I want to sound like Oceano. I want to sound like Suicide Silence, like that sort of thing. This feels much more like a tasteful balance of the genres um, from a band that's pulling from like a broader range of influences. This this rule. 
and shout out to them for winning the, the Wacken battle. Beguiler is one of the hardest working deathcore bands active here in Canada. I just finished touring the country and I saw so many Beguiler posters and t-shirts. They've certainly left an impact on the country and the Canadian metal scene. Like we just mentioned earlier that they're the Wacken uh, metal battle Canadian champions, which I believe gives them the opportunity to play in Germany, which is super cool. Work ethic aside, Beguiler continue to prove themselves that they're a force to be reckoned with. Sonically, they fit perfectly alongside with deathcore champions like Angel Maker and like uh, uh, World of the Brand of Sacrifice. Uh, they have like, ear piercing highs, uh, blast beats are on fleek. The tasty riffs that you're looking for coming back for more and more. And uh, yeah, look out, there's a new deathcore uh, band in town and it's Beguiler and they're here to fuck shit up. Shit's getting fucked. <laughs> Ew. Sorry, I don't know if I should leave that in. <laughs> Next up, we have Quebec Death Metal with a capital Death Champions. Ape, they're ape, they're champions because, you know, they're good at what they do. Uh, apes, we're talking about apes with uh, the release Penitence. <laughs> Pen did I get that right? Pen penitence. Pen penitence. Um, penitence. There's I, there's something about Quebec and death metal and metal in general. Tech metal, tech death. They just got it. They understand what's going on here. We have bands like Critopsy and like uh, Despised Icon. Like these are champion, legendary bands that are coming out of this area. And like Apes are just like another name that you could throw in the hat with them because like this is so good. This was like top-notch production this is scary this this is the the the, the, the well well performed um, uh, and, the, and the vocals are just so heavy yeah no i really 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 like this seven primates out of ten blackened grindy death metal with some big old slam grooves sudden tempo changes tortured sounding vocals this is like music for people who like to eat glass <laughs> uh, the, the size <laughs> the size of the sound is so enveloping and abysmal. Its mix is oppressive and loud. Coffin with Maddie from Year of the Knife is one for the hardcore kids. The Great Fire is like a massive atmosphere track that sounds like you're trapped in an insane asylum in hell. Shadow Walker is again very atmospheric. The core choices are so sour and downtrodden. It's like the sonic equivalent of like the new Elden Ring DLC. The sample <laughs> at the end of Closure and the sharp ringing that uh, cuts it off just feels so uncomfortable. Like the way they keep like dialing up that like piercing tone on it. It's hard to listen to. I don't I don't like that. I don't like hearing that. Um, Echoes is one of my favorite songs on here. The mosh call sort of thing, I guess, as much of a mosh call as you're going to get out of a band like this. But uh, the mosh call and the breakdown at two minutes in reminds me so much of Bowling Teeth. And that's a band I'm never going to stop recommending on here. Bottom feeder kind of reminds me of Harm's Way, actually, um, especially in like its uh, structure, like its song structure. Another one of my favorites on here, Super Moshi. Self-track titled and Pillars are more uh, dynamic than most of the bunch. Uh, get it, Bananas, Apes. Penitence. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I did it. Penitence. Uh, hitting these big open sludgy parts where they just let all the reverb and feedback just sort of swash around in the mix. It's really cool. Pillars has like these haunting leads. Oops, absolutely devastating breakdown at the end. Yeah, this album is huge for Quebec metal. Apes mm -hmm. are fucking crazy. Burnt Knives and Hex Offender, Toronto and Hamilton Punks, they've come together. Uh, they've put out a split. As soon as I put on War Crimes, I immediately felt like things were like way heavier than the last time we listened to Burnt Knives. Yeah. Uh, it's hazier. The sludgier mix makes the, um, the band sound like more like just like downright evil. And then the like more like pristine and cleaned up mix we heard on that first that first EP I heard at least that EP we reviewed. Mm -hmm. The writing seems more hectic, fast, almost power violency. Um, giving up on 2024 showcases that vibe pretty well. Cult Liquor has a solid groove, been a solid momentum through it. The Tremolo guitar riffs sound big. They sound really in your face. Breakdown at the end is like a certified venue ruiner. I don't know if this is just like a production choice they made, or um, maybe this is like an off the floor recording possibly for them as well. We know mm -hmm. that Hex Offender was. 
But yeah, I like this lo-fi mix. It really makes it sound like evil. I think someone forgot to click the split button when they released their songs on the, the streaming stuff because I could only find Burning or Burnt Knives on Apple Music and couldn't find Hex Offenders. Um, but I, I think Hex Offenders was on Bandcamp, so it kind of made it difficult to listen to the the split. Regardless, I also actually, while we're parked here, actually, <laughs> Hex Offender might just win a bandy for, for I gotta say, for one of the worst band names ever in Canada. That I, <laughs> 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 I get that it's a play on words, but it doesn't make it any cooler, especially when you realize that the word that it's playing on is not necessarily desired. Um, I haven't like even really thought. <laughs> I haven't even thought about it until now. Um, it's like calling a song <laughs> "Metaphile." <laughs> yeah, that's not good. It's not good, um, but you know, just from what I was able to check out from the split, like uh, yeah, burning burnt knives were you know crunchy, aggressive, punk hardcore that we've covered before in the past. It's fast, has a bit of a lo-fi sound to the recording, like you were saying. I do wish the vocals were heavier in that sense, was more like fully yelling and like fully growling, because um, like what they're doing in the song is somewhere between like a yell and a scream, and it, it kind of truthfully kind of just sounds like skeleton tour singing in some of these songs <laughs> uh, it's cool though like especially if you're into he-man like like this, this is super cool um i think this release specifically was supposed to be like a live off the floor because we got the live off the floor with hex offender if it is uh and i think it is um then then whatever it, it, it's good this is this is cool hex offender themselves were a band that i wasn't aware of before the split it's more like traditional punk rock um songs still are like two steppable the reverb of vocals give it like a cavernous and ethereal sound. Uh, from what I understand, these tracks are for sure off the floor recordings. Mm-hmm. The Burnt Knives, I'm not 100% sure it wasn't labeled that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked the lo-fi mix on it personally, like I was saying. But yeah, Hex Fender were cool. It sounds, um, sounds cool. Southeast UK Vegan Animal and Human Liberation Metalcore. That was a lot of words. Um, a lot of words. Sentinence. Uh, have sentiments to suffer. This is cool, um, but a little, little, a little peek behind the curtains here, a little peeling of the onion here. Uh, when Ty and I prep for Locals Only, we prepare a large list and we go through and we listen to on our own terms uh, these bands and we just kind of come together with our notes. And sometimes we get, we're right on the same page. Uh, like a lot of the time we'll reference the same band. Um, but like at least once every time before we do a recording, <laughs> Stop, he'll, un- don't he'll, un- me. he'll unknowingly add a UK band to the list. And I have to be like, <laughs> it's, not, have- it's not always the UK. It's <laughs> pretty often the UK actually um, and sometimes we have to be like oh, maybe we should cut them but you know what this was a band that we were like we I think we both checked out while I was listening to them I picked up on the UK accent in the vocals I guess that's how much I've been listening to like heavy music that I actually was able to like decipher that and I was like I think this is from the UK and like we were just like let's roll with it like we've done bands from mexico before why can't we cover a band from the uk um so yeah this was sent sentiments with sentiments to suffer myspace screamo just well, guess the what, what? <laughs> you're getting exposed because it's sentience not uh, sentiments sentience sentience uh sentience to suffer uh, MySpace Screamo just DM'd us asking for the profile song back. I knew exactly what I was getting into when I saw the combination of both the band name and the artwork, kind of with that like cursive writing, starting the song off strong with those like murder chords that are only like in like the vindicated my hunch about what I was going on about this. Um, yeah, the production alone on this track made me do a double take. Like you, you choose to believe me or not, but I can I actually heard that British accent through those vocals, which I you know kind of give myself a pat on the back because I was like hey I think it was anyway this was a big ferocious sounding song by no means is this band huge or signed to a metal label but they absolutely could be uh, both adult and high school version of me are moshing in our bedrooms to this I very much like this track keep up the great work very dissonant and evil sounding um, these guys are not asking for animal liberation very politely in my opinion <laughs> uh, the mix is hazy and suffocating vocals are very raw mixed really well on top of the mix and yeah they're raw they're like they're, they don't sound very heavily affected at all breakdowns sound thicker than a bbl 
I want to give a big shout out to Wormwood Records because you are the reason that this keeps happening to me. I appreciate you. You rule. We like what you do. But yeah, he's he's it's almost always because I saw something on Wormwood and I'm like, what? All right. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Welcome accident because this band rules. And um, mm-hmm. you know what else? I'm really proud of us because we got through this whole thing without doing an offensive English accent. Oh, bruv. In it, in it, Beans in and it. Oi! Oh, <laughs> get it, let the animals out of the cages! <laughs> <laughs> Toronto punk rock royalty haters, the Anti-Queens, released an album, Disenchanted. I don't owe you shit. It's this like bright riffy punk rock with like feminist mm-hmm. and pro humanitarian messaging, along with a slew of like personal songs that could be like empowering anthems to like a young girl maybe going through something similar. Uh, yeah. I don't think that me and you are the target demographic no. for this album, but um, yeah, the riffs are catchy. Um, some of them are pretty heavy. The vocal performance has a nice grit. I like the layering that they use throughout. A few of the songs go into a slower, more like southern ballad sort of thing to them. I enjoy mm-hmm. that. And um, yeah, like I said before, for just my own personal fun, I love knowing that if like a certain type of chronically online guy comes across as this, he'll just be like <laughs> upset about it for existing. And yeah. I think that's funny. Oh, yeah. So I like that. I mm-hmm. appreciate that. Yeah, I think they really lean into that, especially like with their band name, like they're the anti queens, right? Like they're kind of spitting in your face about it. Like there's definitely some guy fuming about this band somewhere online. Um, But this is a great punk rock record, super accessible and fun. Um, This goes up there, right, with like Coral Fang and like Hole. Uh, I personally, like you, like you even said, like we don't gravitate towards this music very often, but I can tell that it's done well. The stru- songs are structured well with catchy choruses in mind. This is, it, it, it definitely achieves what it needs to do. And, uh, and these bands definitely need to exist, especially to, to get into like some of the stuff that we do cover on this channel. So uh, no, this is, we're here for the anti-queens. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. Seven Courtney loves out of 10. Wait, no. One Courtney love is bad. Let's... Um, <laughs> Let's give them seven Weekend at Bernie's Freddie Mercury corpses out of ten because they're anti queen. Mm. Okay, that was a reach. I'm sorry. Oh my god, dude. St. Catherine's Grunge Gazers Red Coat are finally out with this release lush. Now, I actually. Chris is a good friend of the show. He's been on several times. I'm a good, he's a good homie. And Ar- I've arguably had- the funniest bit of the Halloween special. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He actually, he, yeah, he came in, he came in strong, it especially really good. He, he came in full fledged with a, with an actual costume. I couldn't, we couldn't believe it, it was great. Um, yeah. I mean, this so i've actually had the opportunity to kind of actually listen to how this record evolved over the years i've i've he's sent me unreleased you know versions of this and uh from where it started to where we're at now is actually quite the adventure uh they went through some member changes and uh you know they just hunkered down and worked on it themselves both Corey and chris just did put all their passion into it um and uh, from where from where it started to where we're at, it's kind of hard for me to co- cover this re- record because of that. I've actually gotten to see a little bit b- more behind the scenes than most people and like the average viewer. And so I, I'm, d- I'm definitely grateful for that, but I'm also biased at it when I'm trying to give it a review because obviously I heard from where it developed from, if that makes any sense. But uh, this finished product, Lush, but it's like, this is, there's a there's a reason why they took a couple of years to really like hone in this this record because like it, I think it definitely deserved some of the attention that it, it got on it and it, it turned out great. This is a great record. Like shout outs to Red Goat. They've been a, around the block for a minute there. They were contenders in uh, the local 97.7 Rock Search uh, competition years ago, um, and I think they've been at it. They 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 they. they they got that really cool sound that like what, what's the other band that we covered on the last locals only oh neon cowboy that casey baker that like that new grunge feeling that we're like you know it's not quite fully like Soundgarden or like pearl jam but like that influence is very much present channeling the mid to late 90s in the most like unashamed way 
Uh, mm-hmm. This album feels like a celebration of all the best aspects of like the grunge genre, but wrapped up in like a more modern punk rock packaging. They know exactly who they are. They know exactly what influences they're pulling from, and they present it confidently. They're not trying to hide it at all. I appreciate that. The Smashing Pumpkins love that is bursting out of this album is like completely undeniable. Chris is nailing the vocal performances on every single one of these songs. The added layers of like vocal screaming and a well, as well as his ability to like push his own voice into the scream and back out. Very impressive. Uh, Split ends has a great hook. A full on sludge metal breakdown is used in this song. The riff used for the verse sounds menacing. Everything's mixed so nicely. I guess it's worth mentioning now that just the mix on this album in general, the mix and master is so solid. Sonder is a dynamic track. It goes more low key and high key than most of this record um, in the same track. The verse instrumentals remind me of something that like Godsmack would do. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was getting got in a yeah. in a good way. It was super yeah. sick. We talked about all good when that came out. That song rules. Catchy, mm-hmm. great guitar work. Super Vana, great song name. Um, has some seriously fun guitar work in it. Little Death and Sour uh, are my favorite songs on here. Um, Little Death has this weird haunting breakdown in the outro, and Chris is doing some like very unhinged sounding screams in the back. Sour just bangs, total head bobber, um, and I'm a big fan of natural harmonics, so that main riff is like a nice little treat for me. Bleed Out sounds big and bad. I'm addicted to the riff that they use in that verse. Um, It's just so sick, it's so bouncy. Uh, This band takes like the best part of 90s grunge and repurposes it in that modern package and it makes it more accessible for someone who might be into hardcore, might be into punk, maybe Mm -hmm. even like metal. Like these songs Mm -hmm. don't have like downtime. Um, A lot of older grunge albums would have like two or three songs that had like real energy to them and they would become like fan favorites. Mm -hmm. But like all these songs are those bops. Like every one of these songs is like a zero Mm -hmm. or a sliver or Mm -hmm. a freak. Like, they are executing this stuff mm-hmm. at such a high level. It sounds awesome. Last up on the dock, you guys, Hamilton's Hometown Heroes Rarity have put out a new album, Lower Feeling. <laughs> Pessimistic, sullen, post-hardcore with heavy riffage. I always had this, like, head cannon where I was like, oh, like, Rarity's like a pop-punk band, and they're really not. Like, they're, if anything, they're, like, post-hardcore, I would say. Mm-hmm. Very poignant and personality-driven lyrics. They stick with you. Weighty bass and a nice, like, loose punk feeling to all the drums. The lyrics on these songs feel very, like, thematic and purposeful. Like, it's not just, like, metaphors and lines for the sake of writing a song. Like, the songs feel like they meticulously hone in on, like, a certain topic, even if the topic itself feels vague. It reminds me of how Dirty Nil does it, where they stay on topic for an entire song. Also, it reminds me of Dirty Nil because it's a lot of really heavy-ass guitar riffs with, like, predominantly Mm -hmm. clean vocals. Rain Dance sounds like the best Linkin Park song I've ever heard. Like, (laughs) it's so good. Um, who gives a fuck is basically a moody pop song very enchanting <laughs> i love the song kiss and i love the way it's used lyrically in this song it almost makes the title of the song like a red herring because the lyric is about how when you hit the concrete on the way down you'll kiss it sick to my stomach has an evil cowboy breakdown that's really cool big bassy spooky outro on new paint rules vocal performance is great on this weighty full of character favorite tracks are shit eater kiss brain dance post hardcore is sometimes a genre i have trouble with like i have to like really like the band for it to like get its mm-hmm. hooks in me and yeah this this did it this feels top notch yeah this is truly unique this is like this is something that i feel like i've never heard before every song is very different from each other and like it kind of makes like the sonic experience truly enjoyable uh what i especially liked about this record were the subtle influences and what like was being referenced throughout them and like being pulled i was getting major bring me the horizon especially like new bring me the horizon interesting i haven't heard too too much new bring me the horizon so the way that and like not in the sense that they even sound similar just in the sense that like the way that they crafted the songs, I feel like Rarity kind of soaked in and kind of took some of those tropes and like maybe some of like the influential lyrics, um, the way that they even kind of like 
present some of the songs. This was cool. I was also getting like 21 Pilots influence and like even 90s alternative shoegaze with like early 2000s emo. This was a cool record. Like I really thought this was something I've never quite heard before in like an alternative post hardcore rock kind of world. This was this is this is very unique. Uh, my favorite track by them was Who Gives a Fuck. It was a good song. Not clockwise. Um yeah, no. Super cool. Seven rare pieces of steak out of ten. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, that dill- dilly dong does it for this episode of Locals Only. Welcome back from Tour Phil. We're happy to have you back. Congratulations on closing a house live on the show. That's <laughs> great. That's fantastic. Congratulations to Phil said. Put congratulations in the comments. If you like this video and you want to help us out by jo- hitting our join button, it's going to ask you for two Canadian dollars. If you choose to give us those two Canadian dollars, we'll use your Canadian dollars to do Canadian things. We have a uh, lander affiliation down there. So if you're in, if you're shopping, for some mixing and mastering stuff. You can go down there and see if our discount code is something that could work for you. Liking the video is free, helps us a lot. Again, leaving a comment free helps us a lot. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, if you like what you saw here. Um, and we will see you on the next one. See, I'm trying out new outros. We will we'll catch you on the flippity. Slop you later. <laughs> we'll slop you later. <laughs>